In this video, I am going to explain the technical details behind the brighter EVO panel implemented on the LG G1 and also potentially the Sony A90J, which I think represents the biggest jump in consumer OLED panel technology in years. Hello everyone, Vincent Dio from HDTV Test here. At CES, LG launched its new G1 series of OLED TVs, which is equipped with an upgraded EVO panel capable of higher peak brightness than conventional OLEDs. At CES, a couple of other companies also released their flagship OLEDs capable of higher peak brightness, including Sony with its A90J Master Series OLED and Panasonic with its JZ2000 flagship OLED. And even though these two Japanese brands didn't specify that they are using a brighter OLED panel, judging from the recent 1300 nits achieved by the Sony A90J at an event in China, it was a demonstration event for the press and influencers. And judging from this, I believe that they will be using the new OLED panel as well because there is no way that the conventional heatsink technology that was previously employed by Panasonic with its GZ2000 and AZ2000 OLED will be capable of reaching 1300 nits on a 10% window by itself, even in the most dynamic vivid mode. So to investigate what has gone on behind the scenes to achieve this higher peak brightness in terms of the OLED panel, we need to start looking at LG Display, which is the main supplier of all these consumer WRGB OLED panels to all these OLED brands on the market. So for example, if you buy an OLED TV in stores or online, you will be buying a panel actually that is made by LG Display. And there are two key improvements that LG Display has implemented to achieve even higher peak brightness on their new OLED panels. And I think the first clue of this can be retrieved from the press release that they issued sometime around CES. And in it, they mention a more efficient OLED material and also a new layer within the panel itself. And I was watching this excellent interview between Mr. Bob O'Brien, who is the president of DSCC, Display Supply Chain Consultants, with Mr. Brian Berkeley on the Nanosys channel. And in it, Mr. Bob O'Brien talked about the new emitting layer. And I would like to thank him for giving me permission to reproduce the SCC's white OLED structure chart here. So you can see that at the bottom and at the top of the panel, there will be two blue emitting layers and sandwiched in between, there will be a red emitting layer and also there will be a yellow green emitting layer. And new for 2021, LG Display has apparently added a new green emitting layer. Now, this green emitting layer will allow for higher peak brightness and also potentially wider color gamut. Now, you can see from the DSCC WRGB OLED stack structure chart that there are two blue emitting layers. And the reason why two blue layers are needed is because blue OLED material is less efficient than red and green. So you need two blue layers to prolong the lifespan of the OLED panel. Here, apparently LG Display has also improved the efficiency of the blue material. I would like to thank a calibrator from South Korea called Nam, who sent me a link to this YouTube video containing an interview with the CEO of UBI Research, which is a market research and consultancy firm based in South Korea. Now, the YouTube video is in Korean and I barely speak Korean. I only know two phrases, Kamsahamida and Annyeonghe Sayo. So I had to hire someone online to translate it from Korean to English for me. And I'm always happy to pay for a good service. Now, here's the thing. Apparently, what the UBI research CEO is saying is that LG Display has switched the blue OLED material from last year to this year in terms of the brighter EVO panel. So previously, LG Display has been using blue OLED compound from this Japanese company called Idamitsu Kosan, which is hydrogen-based. 
but new for 2021 on the brighter EVO OLED panel, LG Display has started using a newer blue OLED compound from another company called DuPont. And this new blue OLED material contains deuterium in place of hydrogen compound. Deuterium is also known as heavy hydrogen. And basically, it is double the atomic mass of hydrogen. And speaking about double, I've been trying to avoid double entendre in many of my videos recently, but it's so hard. And the reason why deuterium is more beneficial towards OLED lifespan is because when you use deuterium in place of hydrogen, you double the atomic mass and therefore you will have lower ground energy, lower vibrational energy, and therefore the whole compound is going to be more heat resistant. And when the blue OLED material is more heat resistant, that means that it will have a higher CD per ampere or candela per ampere, which means that you know you can drive even higher current to the OLED to achieve higher luminance and higher peak brightness, or you can actually reduce the current and prolong the lifetime if you don't want to go for higher peak brightness. So from the point of view of the brighter OLED EVO panel, LG Display has actually done a couple of things to achieve this. One is the addition of a green emitting layer, and the second is the switch to another blue OLED material which is based on deuterium or heavy hydrogen and this is more heat resistant and have longer lifespan with the same amount of current driving it. And initially, I think you know this upgraded EVO panel will be rolled out in small batches so it will only go on to more premium OLED TV such as the LG G1, the Sony A90J with its 13,000 nits, which is achieved not only with this panel, but also with a metallic heatsink and also potentially the Panasonic JZ2000. We have no confirmation from Panasonic whether they will be using this newer OLED panel, but judging from their hints dropped within their launch event, I think they will be using this brighter OLED panel. And I think that eventually, LG Display will be switching all panels to use this technology with a new green emitting layer and with the more heat resistant deuterium based blue OLED compound. But that doesn't mean that all OLED panels will be capable of higher peak brightness because remember that, you know, maybe the companies will be driving the current for higher peak brightness only on their flagship model. Whereas the entry level or mid range OLED models, you know, they will be using even lower current, so you may get better protection from burn in, you may get longer lifespan, greater reliability, and also lower power consumption. But it is certainly a step forward from the point of view of an OLED panel technology, and it makes me really excited because, from my point of view, I think you know. OLED panel technology has stagnated over the past few years. Obviously, there have been improvements from year to year, but they are mostly in terms of features rather than the OLED panel itself. So just from memory, from 2016 to 2017, you know, the major improvement is a relaxing of the ABL, or Automatic Brightness Limiter. And then from 2018 to 2019, the key improvement is HDMI 2.1. You can see that on the LG C9. And then from 2019 to 2020, the key improvement is 120Hz BFI or black frame insertion. But I think you know there has been no change in terms of the full field peak brightness and also the DCI-P3 color gamut coverage you know, over the past three, four years. You know, they have been static at say 99% DCI-P3 coverage and also 150 nits full screen wide. But if you look at the LG G1 product page on the LG US website, if you look within the small print, you can see that LG is claiming that the higher peak brightness is also applicable to full screen white, which means that you know the ABL will be relaxed even further by this improvement in 
OLED panel technology implemented by LG Display. And if we take the average of the peak brightness on full screen white on previous OLEDs, it is around 150 nits. And if we take this claim 20% increase in efficiency and potentially 20% increase in brightness, then maybe what we are looking at is around 180 nits full screen white, which isn't that much of a jump, but any increase is better than no increase. And in fact, last year in 2020, we probably saw a slight decrease to about 135 nits because probably presumably of the worry over screen burn or burn in, you know, I don't know whether this is a decision taken by LG Display, which is the panel supplier, or it is a decision taken by the individual OLED brands. But I think, you know, last year, universally, I've measured a full screen peak brightness of 135 nits, which is actually a slight drop, 10% drop compared with the previous 150 nits. But this year, I think, you know, on the brighter OLED panels, let's say the LG G1, the Sony A90J, and maybe the Panasonic JZ2000, I hope to see around 180 nits, which is a 20% increase in efficiency and brightness provided for by this new brighter OLED panel from LG Display, which is achieved by using a new green emitting layer and also a deuterium-based blue OLED compound. And obviously it is baby steps at the moment, but it shows that OLED technology is not stagnant. There is still room for improvement and there are still so many things that could be done to improve OLED in terms of the lifetime, in terms of the material. And if there's enough interest, you know, I may delve into some of the things that, you know, maybe LG Display or even any other company is actually doing to push the boundaries of OLED. If you'd like to watch more videos on next-gen display technologies, I've created a playlist here. If you'd like to click on it, and I will see you in the next video.